Luke and Tom here with catsandcarp.com and we're carp fishing. Yeah! <laughs> Yum! Yum! Well guys, it's been way too long since I've done a carp fishing video. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. But the long wait is over. We are gonna put some serious carp in this boat today. Now it's beginning of December, it's pretty cold, a high of 52, but we're gonna catch a load of carp, man. And they said to nail it. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so it's winter time, it's cold. A lot of people have either gone deer hunting or they're hanging up their gear for the year because they think you can't catch carp in the winter time. Not true, my friends. Carp fishing, cat fishing, it's awesome in the winter time. There is a lot of great fishing to be had. It's just different than the summer or the spring or the fall. The patterns change dramatically. So your spots that were good in the summer, not so good anymore. But the thing that makes carp fishing and cat fishing so awesome in the winter time is both species of fish school up densely in the winter time. So in the summer, the carp are all spread out all over the lakes and rivers. As Soon as it gets cold, they start to bunch up in thick schools. Makes it harder to find them, but when you do, it's on like Donkey Kong, man. You can just catch hundreds of fish. So today, we are doing a 200 pound carp fishing challenge. I'm gonna see if I can't catch 200 pounds of carp in one day. It's gonna be epic. This is a lot of bait. We are ready for them. Nathan, put the knife down, buddy. There you go. Hey, Nathan, can you give me a thumbs up? Yeah, there we go. Let's go carp fishing. This is why all my net handles are bent. All right, we've got almost no water. You can see the bottom over there. All right, there it is. There it is. Finding a nice hole. And I've got a spot where the water's about 10 degrees warmer and there's a bit of depth here. So that combination makes it really likely you're gonna have a lot of fish. Look at that, look at that. There we go. There's fish in here. There's a couple fish, there's a couple fish. Okay guys, here's our spot. We've got a deep spot at the mouth of a creek with warm water coming out of it. So this creek is about 10 degrees warmer than the main body of the river. So that's one big plus. It's really shallow pretty much everywhere except for this spot. It's like one to two feet out there. Here it's six to eight feet. It's another real big positive. So we've got a deep spot with warm water that's unique in this area. It's gonna be a magnet. I've anchored poorly today. I let out way too much anchor line. That's gonna cause me grief, I know it. But I'm gonna go and cast out a couple rods there, a couple rods there, a couple rods there, see what happens. Okay, so let me show you my bait. I've got this breadcrumb, strawberry jello, corn, and hominy all mixed up. I got tons of it and it's called a pack bait. It's a sticky bait that you can roll up into a ball and it works fabulously. It works particularly well in the winter, but I've used it all year round. I've got what's called a method lead. This is a 25 gram method lead. It's designed for holding pack baits. I've got a short leader, only about uh, six inches of line. And then I've got a fake piece of corn on a hair rig. Hair rigs are good because they keep you uh, keep nuisance fish away. They have a better hookup ratio. You lose fewer fish. Also good for hook shy fish. And I use the fake corn because it doesn't come off. And I've got six rods, hopefully hot action. I don't want to be rebaiting all the time. So it makes life a lot easier. A ball, a pack bait, and it can be a lot or a little. And I start off with a lot and I'll, once the fish come in, I'll, I'll calm it down. 
Then I've got some of this uh, Rod Hutchinson, uh, what is this? Mega Tutti Fruity flavor scent. It's this powerful artificial scent. I dip my hook in it. Then you go and you jam your hook into this. And there you go. I told you not to kill Nathan. Hey, no, Nathan. Look out, Nathan! He's dead! He's alive! Oh, oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh, there he goes. First fish of the day. Get the net, Nathan. Get the net. Net. Get the net, Nathan. My fish! Nathan, are you going to get the net? Ah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Putting them down on the mat. Ooh! It's a big hybrid. Kids, okay, I'm gonna I clean really up. wanted a cat's a hybrid, but this is my hybrid fish. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, it's my fish. It's a hybrid. Now you can tell it's a hybrid because it doesn't have barbels. So if you look at its mouth, no barbels. And you can see it's got this lateral line down its side. And it's got a kind of a grayish color to them rather than a gold color. Now, some people in the US call this a Crucian carp or they call it an F1 carp. It's not a, a Crucian and it's not an F1 in the technical sense of the term. That's just kind of what we call them. So this is probably either a hybrid between a domestic goldfish and a carp, somebody let their, their pet goldfish loose, or a Prussian carp and a common carp. So, nice fish. We're gonna put them in the keep net and weigh them up. Oh, look at that. Nathan, you want to reel in this fish? Oh, that is, that is a powerful fish. Ooh. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh. Look at that cornhole. That is a big boy. Oh, look, he's got a weird little growth in his bottom of his mouth. Look at that. He's got a little thing over jiggy. What is that? I don't know. Whoa, look at that. Whoa. That is a proper carp. Look how compared to that other guy, he's got little barbels on the corners of his mouth. 15 pounds. All right. Shoosh. There we go. Another little beauty. We're gonna put him in the keep net. I'm using the keep net because we're just getting too too fast. I've been here only six minutes and we've got three fish on. I can't even keep all my rods baited. So instead of weighing the small ones individually, I'll just throw them all in the keep net and weigh them up. The big ones, I don't want to put in the keep net, so I'll weigh those up individually. We got another one going here? Man, I gotta get my rods baited. Caught three fish in about six minutes and I got no bites on this one rod, so I pulled it up. Sure enough, it's all mucked up. So uh, that's the way it goes. If you know a rod's in a good spot, nothing's happening, you probably got a tangle or something. Bet we'll get a fish the next five minutes on this rod. Oh, there we go, right there. That one's mine. All right, come get him, Tom. It's wrapped up on that anchor line. I told you I anchored, uh, anchored. Go left, 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 Tom. Oh, that's a nice one. Can I have it? Can you get them? Hold them up. Yeah. Oh. oh! He is feisty. Yeah, but I'm feisty too. Yeah, you are. Ah. Yeah. Woo. Told you I'm feisty. High five, feisty Tom. Yeah. What did I tell you? That was the one that was all messed up. Fixed the rig, rebaited it, threw it out there. Three minutes later, got a fish. Look at that. Woo, good job, Tommy, man. That's a big fish. Yep, except he's calmed. He's calmed down, yep. He knows what he's been beating. 15 and a half pounds, Tommy. Big fish of the day, just by a hair. Hey, check out what I did. I went out and for seven bucks I bought half a dozen of these kayak leashes and I've attached them to the base of my monster rod holders 
And so when the boys want to reel in a fish, I just go clip this to the rod and hand them the rod and uh, no more rods overboard, which has been a problem. Well, all right, it's been uh, 30 minutes in this spot and we have 30 and a half pounds of carp we know for sure, plus the two carp in the bag. So we're off to a okay start. Um, we need to pick up the pace a little bit, but uh, it is what it is. Hopefully the chum will start dragging, drawing them in a little bit more aggressively and uh, we can really start putting some numbers up on the board. Nathan! Nathan you want this one? There we go. Spunky little carp. We'll put them in the net with the others. Check it out too. The carp in this uh, body of water, a lot of them have pink streaks on the lower part of their tail, but only there and there. I can't tell you how many dozens and dozens of carp I've seen like that with pink, pink bits on their tail. There we go. Well, my gear is a mess. That rod's down, that one's snagged up, that one's in, that one's tucked on the anchor, that one's been mucked around with. That's the only one that's still fishing. Uh, so I think now is the time to fix that anchor line problem. So I'm gonna reel them all in. What was that? I'm gonna reel them all in and we're gonna fix that anchor problem. Maybe, just maybe, there's still a fish on the end of that. Yeah, there's a fish on it, buddy. Come on, Lou! All right. There we go. All right, so I've got a couple of rigs snagged up. I want to go up and, and see if I can free them. And all, most of my action seems to be to the right, so I'm just going to move the boat down a little bit so I can hit that with all six rods. There it is. Oh crap, the dead went out, the dead went out. Here, I can see it. <sighs> Dang it, I was moving the boat and I had the keep net over the side and I was just going nice and slow and the twisty tie wasn't secured enough and it popped loose. I don't know how many fish are is still in here, if any. Ha! All four fish are still in here. Oh, look at this cute little baby carp. Woohoo, little baby carp. Oh, this reel's starting to bite the dust. There you go, another nice little carp. So if you hear some cartoon music and cartoons in the background, that's what it is. <laughs> my boys watch it on my phone. Well, I've got eight fish in the boat and I just lost my first fish. These hair rigs work really well. If you only miss one out of nine bites, that's not bad at all. There we go. Another nice carp. Oh, got a double. So check that out, guys. He's got no pectal fin. See that scar tissue right around there? Whoa. It's Nemo. He's grown up and he's tough. Right there. Oh, he's so cute. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful carp? It's gorgeous. Look, look, look at the play in my reel. My anti-reverse is smoking. There we go. Ooh, look at that tough guy. The big old chunk out of his tail. Oh, it's a tough guy. Let's get him, uh, let's weigh him. All right, eight and a half. Oh, popped off. 
Woo! Beautiful, strong carp. Let's weigh him. Wrong, 10 pounds. Oh, nice 10 pounder. No monster so far, but a lot of really good solid fish. This net I have right here is called the Cabela's Magnum Rubber. It's got a 96 inch handle. It's fairly light and it's got this expandable all uh, mesh. I've uh, landed 42 pound blue catfish in this thing and, and uh, it handles carp no problem. But uh, the nice thing is, is you just prop it up on your rod holder and on the rail and it's a perfect unhooking mat and you don't have to bend over as far. <laughs> Two of my rods, this one and this one, are snagged. They're not fishing. So I'm only using four rods, two for Tommy and two for me. And uh, it's fast and furious. If the action keeps being this hot, I'm just gonna break off these rigs and re-rig them up. If it slows down a little bit, I'll pull up anchor and go get them so I don't have to re-rig them. Well, I've lost count of how many fish we've caught. I think it's somewhere around 12 to 14. We've been fishing for two hours. Um, it's been pretty pretty consistently good but not very large fish uh, a lot of small ones uh, oh look at that there we go oh that is a massive hybrid 7.8 pounds oh we're gonna call him seven and a half for the purposes of this challenge but 7.8 that's my new pb for hybrids man that is a massive hybrid car he, and you can tell he's got a little bit of a whisker a barbel on one side no barbel on the other he's got that kind of grayish color that lateral line beautiful fish oh man got a double here well the tide has changed aggressively we hit low tide now the tide's coming in and you can see here the currents head that way and we've been working our way down the bank here i think with the tide coming this way the fish will come to us so i don't think i want to pull anchor i think i'm going to wait here and the fish are that part of the hole are going to come down to me so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to pop out these rigs and hopefully I won't lose my gear, but if I do, I'll just re-rig it. Whoa. All right, so I lost everything. I go rig them back up. Good chance though that I'll be reeling in fish before I get done with one rod. All right guys, let me show you what I use for uh, to carry my gear. So I don't like to carry a ton of carp gear usually. So I've got this rig wallet, okay? And uh, I keep everything I need in here. Got some sleeves, baiting needle, rigs, quick clips, a few rigs. I even got uh, some leads in here. Here we go. Okay guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about a really common carp fishing myth. There's a lot of British anglers who think that if the carp's fins are bent backwards in the net that it somehow breaks their fins or hurts them. Check this out. See? Look at that. Man, doesn't hurt them at all. They can bend it all the way back to their chin. Look at that. It's, you can't, you can feel no resistance. It's as floppy as can be. It's like bending a baby's feet up to its chin, okay? It doesn't hurt him at all. Look at that beautiful carp. What a fun fish to catch, man.
Yeah, I think I only have one rod in the water right now. Everything else has been gotten taken out. <laughs> Some of you guys may notice that I don't use bells on these fishing rods like I do when I'm uh, cat fishing. And there's a very good reason for that. Don't have the time. Too much, too many fish too quickly. Taking the bells on and off is just gets in the way. Another fish. When you get a double like this, I kind of gauge it. I've got a big fish, a really big fish, then I'll just ignore the other one and reel in the big fish. Two medium or small ones like this, I reel one in, get them off the bottom, pull them away from the snags, then grab the other one and do the same thing, and then fight them. Vacate the net, buddy, vacate the net. All right, I gotta leave those rods out. I'm not putting them back in because, crap, I just need to get two seconds to put my rig together. If I can get two seconds without a fish, let me show you how a hair rig works. Got this little hair rig tied up here. Got a piece of fake corn skewered on a baiting needle. I'm gonna hook the loop onto the needle, transfer the corn over. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of these bait stops, shove it through the, the loop on the end of the hair, and then just Tighten it up. There you go. Not a bad little carp. Get a lot of little ones though. I haven't had a big carp in a while. Look at the colors on him. He's not quite a pure ghost carp, but he looks like his mama might have been one. Look at that. He's pretty. You want to reel him in? All right, another beautiful little carp, just a tiny little guy. Well guys, I have caught one fish after another. All six of my rods are out of the water waiting to be baited up. So I'll take this moment, this break, to weigh up my keep net, because my keep net is full of fish. There's gotta be pushing 15, 20 fish in there. I've completely lost count. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, we have 56 and a half pounds of carp that we've already weighed, plus whatever's in the keep net. So let's check it out. A lot of carp coming through. Yeah, I think I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-ish. There are way many, way more than I thought. You have to weigh them in batches. Okay. Thirty point five. All right. Thirty point five for batch number one. pounds you don't have to go home but you can't stay here guys everyone out whoo I'm glad we emptied the net when we did I did not think it was that full uh, I think it's something like 25 fish I'm gonna have to go back through the video to do the math this is <laughs> too much to keep track of in my head all right, let's get baited up. Let's get that extra 70 pounds. Well, we still have plenty of bait, so that's good. And uh, my dip bait's holding out well. If you wanna know how to make this, 
check the description below and I'll put a link to a video on how to make this bait. But it works very well, keeps for two or three days if you refrigerate it, otherwise it starts to go moldy. Um, but you can keep all the dry ingredients separate. Uh, you know, canned corn, jello, panko, keep it all separate and just mix it whenever you need it. I have a lot of you guys ask whether this bait will work in rivers. Well, here's your answer. You know, we're getting quite a bit of current, still getting bites. So this works in still water, works in moving water, works in wintertime, works in summer. This is just a great all around bait. Well, we've been fishing for a little under three hours and we've caught about 130 pounds of fish, but the boys have a Christmas party we're gonna be going to here in a little bit. So. We better pick up the pace if we're going to make that 200 pound goal. All right, that helps. Check it out, another beautiful common carp. Look at that. Well, I'm getting a little worried. I've been having a lot of bites I think are catfish. We might be having some catfish moving in here. Though I'll tell you, my biggest channel catfish ever, 23 pounds, was caught on this exact same bait, exact same rig. Ooh, okay, so I need to haul butt right now if we're gonna make it. Uh, let me pass this, pass this to uh, Tommy. Hey Tommy, Mother wants to talk to you. Look at that, guys. Look what that is. Check this out guys, this is a mirror carp. These are really rare here in my neck of the woods. I've only caught four of these here in the US. This is my first one ever in this spot. That's really awesome. Okay, cool guys. You can tell mirror carp because they have this irregular scale pattern. Um, some mirror carp have no scales at all. Some just have a few, some have uh, just asymmetrical uh, scales all over their body, but what a beauty. Look at him. Well guys, I've got a problem. I just got a phone call from my wife and I have miscalculated what time Tommy needs to be at this Christmas pageant thingamajiggy. So we need to get out of here immediately. Um, so I'm gonna go just uh, reel in my gear, get pull anchor and let's uh, weigh this last little bit of fish and see where we're at. All right, I'm gonna go and weigh up our fish. Nine pounds, nine pounds with our two little cards. All right, guys, bye bye. Don't litter. All right, guys, got to reel them in. Oh, what's this? He was just sitting on there or something. He just hit it. All right, got a little, got a little carp here. So many fish, it's tore the shrink tubing off my uh, off my rig. Five pounds, five pounds. All right, here you go, little guy. Oh, got one. Another last minute cart. Two and a half, two and a half pounds. There you go, little guy. Well guys, all my rigs are officially out of the water and we did not get 200 pounds. I do not know exactly what our total is, but I'm pretty sure it's not 200. So I'm gonna go back and uh, edit the video and figure out exactly what the total is. But I think if I had another couple hours, I would've done it. I think mean, would've, I would've done it. But we gotta get Tommy dressed up like a wise man and get him to the church here in the next couple hours because apparently he's in some sort of play thing in Rajiggy. So uh, <laughs> we better hurry up and go do that. Well guys, we didn't meet our goal, but did we have fun? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we sure did. Well everyone, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to 